The universe is a fascinating place. It contains billions of all sorts of stars, tiny dwarves and enormous supergiants, dim and bright, ordinary and bizarre stars. All of them are interconnected by invisible gravitational filaments, thus forming galaxies and star clusters. Galaxies in their turn are quite busy with their own amazing stuff. They form, evolve and merge. Theirs is a complex and well-regulated internal structure predefined by fundamental laws of nature. Our galaxy has its neighbors too. Today we have picked out the most outstanding ones to talk about. The exact number of galaxies in the universe is not known for certain yet. It is supposedly well over several hundred billion. Galaxies may be of all sorts of different shapes. As for the main varieties, they include elliptical, spiral, lenticular and irregular galaxies. There are subcategories for these as well. The Milky Way, for example, is a barred spiral galaxy. Since any galaxy consists of a great number of stars, these objects' masses may reach incredible values. The mass of the dwarf galaxy Segway 2, for example, is just 550,000 times that of the Sun. As for the supergiant elliptical galaxy IC1101, it is 1,700 times heavier than the Milky Way. Together with its immediate neighbors, our galaxy comprises what is known as the local group. It includes over 50 galaxies, three of which are quite large in comparison to the others. These are the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy and the Triangulum Galaxy. The diameter of the local group measures approximately 10 million light years and its mass is about 3 trillion times that of the Sun. Together with a few other galaxy clusters of more modest dimensions, the local group in its turn comprises the local sheet, a flat cloud with a diameter measuring approximately 23 million light-years. It is about 5 million light-years thick. The local sheet forms part of the Virgo supercluster, a vast element of the large-scale structure of the universe. The local group is conditionally divided into four parts. The first one is the subgroup of the Milky Way, comprised of our galaxy and its satellites, which may be either dwarf galaxies or star clusters. The Milky Way is the second largest galaxy in the cluster. According to today's estimates, it contains 200 to 400 billion stars, as well as from 25 to 100 billion brown dwarfs. Our galaxy has a spiral structure and appears to be a disk with a diameter measuring about 200,000 light-years. At the same time, its thickness is just around a thousand light-years. Still, there is a bulge at the center of the disk with a diameter of around 27,000 light-years, a supermassive black hole with a mass of as much as 4.3 million times that of the Sun is supposedly concealed inside the bulge. A smaller black hole is said to be orbiting it, whose mass is anything from 1 to 10,000 times that of the Sun. It is posited that it is dark matter that accounts for most of the mass of the Milky Way, which is why it is impossible to estimate it at this point. According to the latest estimates, however, the mass of our galaxy is approximately 1.5 trillion times that of the Sun. Going slightly further from the Milky Way, we can observe its 31 satellites. These are mostly irregular-shaped dwarf galaxies, they get so twisted and bent in every which way on account of the gravitational influence of their massive neighbor. Our closest satellite is the dwarf galaxy CMA Dwarf, which can be found in the Canis Major constellation. It lies 25,000 light-years away from the Earth and 42,000 light-years from the center of our galaxy. Appearing like an elongated ellipsis, this dwarf galaxy contains supposedly around 1 billion stars most of which are red giants. Due to the gravitational influence exerted by the Milky Way, the Canis Major Galaxy has almost broken apart. Tidal forces had the following disrupting effect. 
the stars torn out from the galaxy came to form the so-called Monoceros Ring, an elaborate ring-shaped structure that traps around the Milky Way. Unfortunately, observation of CMA Dwarf is greatly thwarted by gas and dust clouds floating between the galaxy and our Earth. The largest satellite of the Milky Way and the fourth largest galaxy in the local group is the Large Magellanic Cloud. It is located as far as about 163,000 light years, containing approximately 30 billion stars. It has a diameter of just seven times as little as that of our galaxy. At the same time, the cloud's mass is 300 times as little as that of the Milky Way. The explanation for such a stark contrast is this. The Large Magellanic Cloud does not happen to contain a supermassive black hole in the center. Besides, there are great amounts of dark matter in the Milky Way's galactic halo. The Large Magellanic Cloud is an SBM type, which is in between dwarf spiral and irregular galaxies. Even though the gravitational influence exerted over it by its massive neighbors has as well as erased almost all traces of its former spiral structure, the bar in the center remains to be clearly distinguishable. There are a few especially notable objects located in the Large Magellanic Cloud. For example, the star R136A1, lying 165,000 light years away, is the heaviest star ever detected. This blue supergiant's mass is 315 times that of the Sun, and its surface temperature is as scorching as over 40,000 Kelvin. The luminosity of R136A1 is 8.7 million times that of the Sun. The Large Magellanic Cloud is also home to one of the largest stars in the investigated parts of the universe. The diameter of the red giant WOH G64 is over one and a half thousand that of the Sun. This is just 25% less than the diameter of the largest supergiant ever detected, Stevenson 2-18. According to today's accepted concepts of stellar evolution, WOH G64 is currently in the final stage of its life and is expected to go supernova at any moment in the next several thousand years. When speaking about the Milky Way subgroup, of course we can't but mention the Virgo Stellar Stream. Occupying approximately 5% of the entire sky, it appears as an exceptionally scattered and dim flow of several hundred thousand stars on the outskirts of our galaxy. According to the overwhelming majority of scientists, the Virgo Stellar Stream is remnants of a dwarf spherical galaxy that has at some point almost completely been swallowed up by the Milky Way. Moving yet further, we will soon encounter the galaxy known as Andromeda, or the Andromeda Nebula. Together with its satellites, it forms part of the local group referred to as the Andromeda subgroup. The galaxy lies as far as around 800 kiloparsecs, or 2.5 million light-years, which earns it the status of our closest neighboring galaxy, which isn't a dwarf one. The diameter of the Andromeda Nebula measures approximately 220,000 light-years, which is slightly more than that of the Milky Way. With its star count of around a trillion, there are three to five times as many of them in it as there are in our galaxy. Interestingly, the masses of the two galaxies are more or less the same, at around one and a half trillion solar masses. The point is that the stars forming the Andromeda Nebula are on average older and lighter than those of the Milky Way. Andromeda is one of our closest neighbors. Appearing as an elongated light spot, it is also one of the few galaxies visible to the naked eye. Interestingly, its angular diameter is six times that of the Moon. The Andromeda Nebula is a spiral galaxy with two clearly defined arms. It is peculiar for its binary core. When we observe it through a telescope, we notice two clearly seen star clusters in the center of the galaxy, with a distance between them around five light years. According to one of proposed theories, at some point Andromeda swallowed up another galaxy, capturing its core. Another supposition has it that there is, after all, just one core, with some part of it obscured by a dust cloud. It is estimated that the overall mass of the central part of this galaxy is over 140 million solar masses. 
There are approximately 400 globular clusters in the Andromeda Nebula, which is about two to three times as many as there are in the Milky Way. This means that it probably swallowed up quite a few dwarf galaxies in the past, and the clusters it contains now are the remnants of their cores. Andromeda has around 30 satellites. The ones that stand out are dwarf spiral galaxies, designations M32 and M110. Some theories suggest that M32 rammed the Andromeda Nebula several billion years ago, leaving a gargantuan hole in its structure. This had a serious effect on M32 as well, with a substantial part of this galaxy becoming Andromeda's galactic halo. The Milky Way is estimated to collide with Andromeda in around 5 billion years' time. Today, it is still quite impossible to model this tremendous encounter and its consequences accurately, but it is bound to be a truly spectacular sight. The third large representative of the local group is the Triangulum Galaxy. It is twice as little as the Milky Way in size and has no confirmed satellites, but some dwarf galaxies of the local group may well be gravitationally bound to it. The Triangulum Galaxy is not likely to boast a supermassive black hole in its center. The diameter of the galaxy measures approximately 50,000 light-years. The distance between Triangulum and the Milky Way is 2.7 to 3 million light-years. The galaxy also contains the NGC 604 nebula, which is the largest known area in space where stars are actively born. The stellar nursery's diameter reaches 1,300 light-years. Around 200 supergiants, with a total mass of 100,000 solar masses, are compactly grouped here. These stars are young and hot, with their powerful luminosity ionizing the gas the star cluster is enveloped in. This gives the gas a bright glow, which in its turn makes the nebula appear quite bright. Apart from the objects mentioned, there are other ones in the local group which don't fall into any of the mentioned subgroups. As a rule, these are remote dwarf galaxies and star clusters not tightly gravitationally bound to any of the three large galaxies. The galaxy IC10 can be singled out here. Lying approximately 2.2 million light-years away from the Sun, it is the only galaxy of the local group where stars are actively born. IC10 is shrouded in a hydrogen outer envelope, whose radius is much bigger than that of the galaxy itself. The stellar disk of IC10, meanwhile, rotates in the direction opposite to that of the outer envelope. With their mind-boggling dimensions of hundreds of thousands of light-years on end, even the largest galaxies remain tiny dots in the large-scale structure of the universe. The distances between them are staggeringly enormous, and even light takes millions of years to reach the closest of them. Nevertheless, we can still observe and study them. There are innumerable riddles lurking in the cosmos, and mankind keeps solving them one after another with unflagging zest, because every new discovery is just another step in our cognition of the universe.